the meathead is a beloved character in pop culture. You know, when when I think of the meathead myself, uh, what immediately comes to mind is like Biff in Back to the Future. You know, but he was he was kind of like a negative meathead. Like no one no one really likes Biff. He's the enemy of the the movie, right? He's the enemy of the Back to the Future franchise. However, there are some lovable meatheads, and I guess like in in our I guess non film version, you know, reality. I, I guess the the most quintessential sort of like uh, every man good guy meathead that most people think of. I think like it, it's Joe Rogan, <laughs> <laughs> but you know. He's been a goof during this whole uh, pandemic thing, promoting people who uh, spew nonsense on his program. And so why, why are we talking about Joe today? Okay, well, you know, Joe Rogan decided to have two two people in particular on who were uh, particularly e egregious. So you have your uh, Robert Malone and uh, that McCullough guy. I, I don't really care enough to, to know their names. Rupert McCullough, something McCullough. I, I don't really care. They're, they're both people who... Uh, you, you know, they, they might be well-researched to a certain extent, but being well-researched well doesn't mean that you actually know what you're talking about or, or doesn't preclude the fact that you could be lying. You know, I, I do think there's like a, a degree of credulousness that some people, especially if they have a lot of meat in their heads, to just accept what people tell them at, at face value without thinking... This person could be lying to me. Neil Young has decided to no longer host their music on Spotify, which is where Joe Rogan primarily hosts his podcast. That is him sitting down with another dude so they can talk for four hours about inane bullshit. They knew it was wrong. No, no. No, no. no. What are you saying? No, no, they were doing it because it was wrong. Right. They but, didn't just I mean, know, but that's but different, wrong right? Wrong is the wrong word then. No, no, it isn't. It's exactly right. They were out to do the maximal amount of harm I don't mean in the minimal in, amount but, of time. But they but they felt it was the thing to do and they didn't think that it was there was something No, they thought that it they was, shouldn't do. No, no. No, no. No, no, no. It's because like they did it's it. like the Joker. Right, but he they burns did it. The money. They thought yeah. it was something they should do. No. But they did it. Yes. So they shot, thought it was something they should do. No. What are you saying? I'm saying Listen, they if they decided... said if they want, but they wanted to do it. Yes. And they did it. So yes. it was something they should do. No. <laughs> no, they did it because it was the worst thing they could think of. Right. Which is what they should do because well, they wanted to do the worst thing they could do. Yes. They wanted to do. Yes. We can agree on That's that. That's what I'm saying. Just a... Neil Young, he's pulling his music from Spotify. And a lot of the the chuttery have come out of the woodworks the the other like lesser degrees of meathead you know your skater punk meatheads neil young famous musician has issued an ultimatum he sent a letter to his management saying that he wants spotify to either remove joe rogan or take all of his music offline now the letter apparently has since been deleted and Neil Young is still currently on Spotify, so it seems like this was all bluster, all bark and no bite. And ultimately, Neil Young backed down when he realized you are not going to win. Now, Neil Young's famous, popular music, lots of really big songs, hundreds of millions of downloads. But is Spotify going to give up a modern day massive celebrity with one of the biggest shows in the world and the biggest podcast in the world for an aging hippie. Neil Young is quite old. I mean, look at that face. Look at that beautiful aged face. What a what a lovely face. I'm not I'm not gonna take away, but like Joe Rogan's pretty damn old. Like we don't have like <laughs> listen, Joe Rogan looks like my dad. And my dad's in his 60s, all right? Joe Rogan is an old fucking man, all right? Joe Rogan might be, like, a big-ass name right now. Like, he's pumping out these podcasts, making a millions of dollars. But who's going to be listening to Joe Rogan sitting down for a four-hour interview with Jordan Peterson eight years from now? Yet they'll still be bopping to keep on rocking in the free world. Like, I don't even know what the fuck was, like, on talk radio back, like, 20 years ago. Yeah, we all know Keep On Rockin'. Since Spotify 
pulled <laughs> Neil, well, like the Tim Pool clip. Like, yes, Tim Pool not only is a you know a fellow meathead of the skater variety, also uh, predicted incorrectly that somehow Neil was going to stay on Spotify. Spotify, you know, they pulled Neil Young. Joni Mitchell hopped on. She's out. They're losing $4 billion in market value since this has happened. Now, it's market value, so it's stocks. This could change at any point as value fluctuates. People forget, sign back on to Spotify, all that bullshit. But the point is, it's like Neil Young and Joni Mitchell pulling out is not like some insignificant thing. Even if Joe Rogan is popular right now, and even if... Neil Young might be older than Joe Rogan because of the staying power of their music, right? Because, again, no one's going to go back to listen to the old catalog of Joe Rogan. And if you think that you would, name me who Joe Rogan interviewed five years ago on this date. You can't tell me because you don't fucking care because you're not going back to listen to it, but you can name me. Keep on rocking in the free world. Listen, I don't want to pretend like Neil Young is some kind of scientific genius here. Like... Yes, he's on the right track here when it comes to the vaccines and COVID-19, but this is him just a couple years before the pandemic, after he released his uh, anti-GMO album, talking about what scientific studies mean to him back then. What's wrong with them? Yeah, what's wrong with them? I mean, a study just came out that says there's absolutely no nutritional difference between people in Europe who generally don't eat GMOs and Americans who do eat GMOs. That, and that must be a Monsanto study that didn't notice the, the, the terrible diseases and all of the things that are happening. It doesn't matter where you come from. You could cherry pick data. You could just claim that the science is corrupt and you could go about your day as if, you know, you did your due diligence. You just go, oh, corruption, and you can go on and ignore everything. You know, I'm not here to praise Neil Young and his past behavior. It's just that he happens to be right today and we could take that for what it is and realize that Joe Rogan is in fact spreading COVID-19 misinformation by hosting the people that he's hosting. So that brings us to this video. This is Joe Rogan apologizing? I guess we'll call it an apology. He, he feels like he has to say something. Hello, friends. I wanted to make a video to address some of the controversy that's been going on over the past few days. And first of all, to say thank you to everyone that sent love and support. I truly, truly appreciate it. And it's been very nice to hear from you. Does he have to? face the sun while making his apology video. You can even see the shadow of the fucking cell phone on his uh, chest. Like you could, you could stand somewhere else. You, di <laughs> you didn't have to face the sun. What? <laughs> or at least wear shades. Like I, like, I don't know, it's like, would the shades take away from the apology video? Like any more than the fact that he's like squinting cause the sun is shining in his eyes? Like, why? Why do this to yourself, Joe? You could have chose anywhere else to shoot this video. I wanted to make this video, first of all, because I think there's a lot of people that have a distorted perception of what I do, maybe based on sound bites or based on headlines of articles that are disparaging. Um, the podcast has been accused of spreading dangerous misinformation, specifically about two episodes, a little bit about some other ones, but specifically about two. One with uh, Dr. Peter McCullough and one with Dr. Robert Malone. Dr. Peter McCullough is a cardiologist and he is the most published physician in his field in history. Linus Pauling was a Nobel Prize winner. And yet the shit that he said about vitamin C was incorrect. Like, just because you're a published uh, researcher in one field does not magically mean that you, you can uh, pontificate and spout whatever you want to about other fields. Like this Peter dude, okay, he's a cardiologist. What the fuck is he going on Joe Rogan to talk about COVID, a viral infection, or vaccines, or ivermectin, or hydroxychloroquine? Why is he going on Joe Rogan to talk about that? Dr. Robert Malone owns nine patents on the creation of mRNA vaccine technology and is at least partially responsible for the creation of the technology that led to mRNA vaccines. Yes, Robert Malone was like he did some work in the 90s and uh, maybe some of the 80s and sort of like did some of the precursor work in what became the mRNA technology, which eventually was used to construct these vaccines. Now him having patents, 
Anyone can have a patent. What the like people patent shit all the time. There's how many people have put in patents for uh, what are they? The uh, perpetual motion machines. You know, the idea that you could have a machine that just powers itself and keeps going on forever, which defy the laws of physics. There's people with patents for those. You know, <laughs> this is the thing. Joe Rogan pretends like, oh, l listen to me. He's got patents. So, like, of course I'm going to trust him. And, like, you, like he even speaks like, uh, I did the research. I knew he had these patents. So, like, I feel like this guy is someone worth listening to. Where it's like, you already, like, your meathead has, like, r like failed at step one here. <laughs> in assessing the merits of this individual. I'm going to have him on my show where I can let him say whatever he wants. And I won't push back because patents. Both these people are very highly credentialed very intelligent, very accomplished people, and they have an opinion that's different from the mainstream narrative. I wanted to hear what their opinion is. I had them on, and because of that, those episodes in particular, uh, they, those episodes were labeled as being dangerous. They had dangerous misinformation in them. The problem I have with the term misinformation, especially today, is that many of the things that we thought of as misinformation just a short while ago are now accepted as fact. Like for instance, eight months ago, if you said, if you get vaccinated, you can still catch COVID and you can still spread COVID, you would be removed from social media. They would, they would ban you from certain platforms. I don't have a big platform. I don't have like a ton of people listening to me and that's fair. Y'all got, we all got to start from somewhere, right? But I said this shit. I, I was saying this shit. Of course, like I, even back when vaccines were still rolling out, I said this shit because like it's true for all vaccines. You you could have the measles vaccine, still get measles. Now, it might reduce the extent to which uh, you suffer severe consequences. It is true to say that it does prevent you, uh, or at least severely reduce the extent to which you will get it. But most vac vaccines have some sort of threshold where, like, they're not always effective. It depends on the antibody response that you get. So, like, this is just the nature of vaccines, and it always has been that way. And no, like, what he's saying here is just not factually true. If, if what you said back then was that vaccines don't work, that's what you were getting called out for. However, if you're like, hey, these vaccines won't 100% prevent an infection, but it can reduce the severity of the illness and also severely reduce the chances of you getting infected. Those were true statements and you could say them because they're factually accurate. If you said, I don't think cloth masks work, you would be banned from social media. Now, that's openly and repeatedly stated on CNN. Things changed. Things changed. Back then, it was effective. Then there was this new thing. It's called Omicron. Omicron was different than Delta, which was different than the original variant. Things change. Like, here's the thing is, even in his fucking apology video, he's still spreading misinformation. If you said, I think it's possible that COVID-19 came from a lab, you'd be banned from many social media platforms. Now that's on the cover of Newsweek. The lab theory thing, no one said you couldn't ask that question. The, the thing is, is when people like, like landed on it as the explanation, when there is, there's less evidence and data that suggests it comes from a lab than that it came from natural causes. And I'm pretty sure the scientists, when this became a huge news item almost a year ago, uh, and it's like, do you hear anyone talking about the lab theory anymore? No? Because it's pretty conclusive that it likely came from a natural source. Almost no one in the scientific community thinks that it came from a lab. The lab theory is so silly on the face of it. Like, think about it. If it came from the lab, how did it get in there? Did they construct it in the lab and then it escaped? Or, which is their, like, usually when you hear somebody saying that it's the, the lab that did it, often they're saying it was constructed in the lab and then somehow it leaked out. But there's no evidence. When you look at the virus and you study the virus, there's absolutely no evidence that it was constructed. And all the evidence points to it having a natural origin. So the only other way that the lab hypothesis works is that, say, somebody took a bat from the wild, it had the virus, it went into the lab, and then somehow got out of the lab into uh, the world. When it's like, why couldn't... Isn't it easier to think of the fact that the bat was infected and infected someone out there? Why add the additional step of the lab? I'm just a person who sits down and talks to people and has conversations with them. Do I get things wrong? Absolutely, I get things wrong. But I try to correct them. 
whenever I get something wrong, I try to correct it because I'm interested in telling the truth. I'm interested in finding out what the truth is. And I'm interested in having interesting conversations with people that have differing opinions. Um, I'm not interested in only talking to people that uh, have one perspective. That's one of the reasons why I had Sanjay Gupta on. Joe Rogan pushed back on Sanjay Gupta because on CNN, they said that uh, Joe Rogan took the horse medicine, okay? And Joe Rogan's like, mine was human ivermectin, not horse ivermectin, so your news organization did a bad to me, and I'm Joe Rogan, and I don't like that you said bad things about me. He did not push back against Robert Malone. He did not push back against Peter McCullough. Now, I love that Joe Rogan states that he wants to correct himself when he's wrong but just look at this increase in the instances of myocarditis yes but you know what hospitalization the, you know that there's COVID. an increased risk of myocarditis in among that age cohort from getting COVID as well which exceeds the risk of myocarditis from the vaccine I don't think that's true I don't think it it's is. true I don't no, no no I don't think it's true that there's an increased risk of myocarditis from people catching COVID that are young versus increased risk of myocarditis from the vaccine no there is there's both. Pro well, let's look that up because I don't think that's true. <laughs> There's myocarditis is more common after COVID-19 infection than vaccination. But is this with children? Uh, yeah, we're talking about young people. Men and boys aged under 30 after this is what it says here. With, with children is the issue. Well, no, we were talking about 15-year-olds. Well, we're talking about young children. Male so, child. Yes, 12 to 17. 12 to 17, more likely to build myocarditis within three months of catching COVID at a rate of 450 cases per million infection. This compares to 67 cases of myocarditis per million at the same time following their second dose of Pfizer. Yeah, so you're about eight times likely to get myocarditis from getting COVID than from getting the vaccine. That's interesting. Now, that, that is said, not what I've read before, but also it's like, when, even when we're reading these things, it's like, what are we getting this from? Is this from well, the VAERS the report? But even from the VAERS reports when they report this stuff. It's like, I think this. Well, you're wrong. And here's the thing. Well, well I'll, I'll just the data correct. Like, I don't know. I'm Joe Rogan. I don't know. Like, this is not correcting yourself when you're wrong. And, and like, he's, you can see here, this is clearly motivated reasoning. He thinks that he's right on one thing and is pushing back in the face of evidence directly being presented to him. One of the things that Spotify wants to do that I agree with is that at the beginning of these controversial podcasts, like specifically ones about COVID, is to put a disclaimer and say that you should speak with your physician and that these people and the opinions that they express are contrary to the opinions of uh, the consensus of experts, which I think is very important. Sure, have that on there. I'm very happy with that. The beginning thing of like adding that is just a little silly in my mind like i wish it's like i realize it's kind of a get out of jail free card again like a lot of the covid denialists throw that up on their thing and make a mockery of it and so people people know like th that is signals of like yeah you're getting this hot cool contrarian take when it's like it's the platforming of these people in the first place that's a problem not you know you could slap on whatever like surgeon general's warning shit on the front but people are still gonna buy the cigarettes you know if there's anything that i've done that i could do better is uh have more experts with differing opinions right after i have the controversial ones uh i would most certainly be open to doing that. I should get on one of the medical experts to tell me not to stare directly into the sun. This, these podcasts are very strange because they're just conversations. And oftentimes I have no idea what I'm gonna talk about until I sit down and talk to people. And that's why some of my ideas are not that prepared or fleshed out because I'm literally having them in real time. Um, <laughs> but I do my best and they're just conversations. And I think that's also the appeal of the show. It's one of the things that makes it interesting. I love just watching a show where just two people completely full of meat, just hashing out their meat ideas live four to five hours straight of pure, pure meat dialogue with no, no facts, no reality, just feeling, feeling the meat feels directly through the, the airwaves from, from meat to meat. Now, Joe Rogan tells some cutesy story here about uh, this one time when I guess Neil Young played at a place where he was bouncing. But, like, you came here for me and not Joe. So rather than play you everything that just happened there for four or five minutes, instead, you're going to get a wonderful duet with Jody and Joe. Joe and Jody. The... the <laughs> 
Keep on rocking in the free world. That was my last day on the job. I don't even think I corrected. Keep on rocking in the free world. And definitely no hard feelings towards Joni Mitchell. I love her too. I love her music. Chucky's in Love is a great song. That is not <laughs> Joni Mitchell's song. I love Joni Mitchell for the song she never sang. Big Yellow Taxi? You couldn't have thought of Big Yellow Fucking Taxi. That's like the biggest... That is Joni Mitchell. What do you think of Joni Mitchell? He loves these people. I mean, this is this is the true the true meat braid. The, the meat... The meat might still be in there. But it's not working at full capacity. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know what else I can do uh, differently other than maybe try harder to get people with uh, differing opinions on right afterwards. I do think that that's important. And, uh, and do my best to make sure that I've researched these topics, <laughs> the controversial ones in particular, and have all the pertinent facts at hand before I discuss them. Again he never thought to do that before. <laughs> I might as well start doing research now. I haven't been doing it for the past 10 years. Let's go. Let's just start researching now. Oh, my God. The podcast started off as just fucking around with my friends and having fun and talking. And then when it became popular, other people wanted to come on. And I was like, oh, it'd be cool to talk to that person. Oh, he's interesting. Oh, she's got a cool book out. And then boom, it's become what it is today, which is like some out of control juggernaut that I barely have control of. He framed it in such a way that you could see the potential for grifters to want to grift off this. Like, yeah, he was just a dude fucking around with some friends and it got really popular. And then other people were like, let me on. I have something that I want to sell to people. And then he just start letting these people on without doing any research. I think it was Sam Cedar was on MSNBC and was saying that like, his intent is irrelevant, which is true. Like his intent here is irrelevant. He's doing the harm, whether he realizes it or, or not. But there's still an element here, which it's like, what, what, a, what a sad, pathetic meathead. <laughs> Like, he's being taken advantage of it. He just doesn't realize it. And he's like, why, why is Neil Young, my friend, my friend Neil, no longer wants to be on my show? <laughs> he wants to pull music and protest me, and I love him dearly, but I don't know. I was just talking to people. I was talking to people, now people are angry. I don't get it. My pledge to you is that I will do my best to try to balance out these more controversial viewpoints with other people's perspectives so we can maybe find a better point of view. I, 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 I had no plan that like we were gonna get this big and now I have this huge responsibility because I have this giant fucking audience that's listening to me to, to platform these boneheads that wanna come on and be all like, COVID isn't real. And then it's like my responsibility to fact check this shit yet when my head's full of meat? I can't do that. But now his, his solution is rather than like, I don't know, figuring out what the facts are and then dealing with that like a normal human being instead we get uh the solution is to just let everyone speak and about we need balance we need to balance the force so we need to have evolutionists creationists we need to have uh aids denialists and aids believers and we need to have like people who think vaccines uh, cause your eyeballs to pop out of your head and we need people who believe that vaccines are at least uh, moderately helpful in mitigating the spread of a, a disease we need to balance everything because I'm Joe and rather than deal with the fact that I have this huge platform and I need to platform people responsibly, I'm just going to ignore all that and uh, just have an equal number of every side of everything and that will somehow uh, make everyone happier. But my point of doing this is always just to create interesting conversations and ones that I hope people enjoy. So if I pissed you off, I'm sorry. And uh, if you enjoy the podcast, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you to Spotify. Thank you all the supporters. And, and even thank you to the haters because it's good to have some haters. It makes you reassess what you're doing and put things into perspective. And, and uh, I, think, I think that's good too. You know, the bit about the haters, I get it. Like there's a, there's a nugget there that kind of makes sense. Having some constructive criticism out there is good and can improve you and can get you to do better. But also imagine if like, 
You know, so Joe Rogan platforms a bunch of transphobes. So if I pissed you off, I'm sorry. Joe Rogan platforms a bunch of climate deniers. So if I pissed you off, I'm sorry. Joe Rogan killed your family members because he got on Robert Malone to tell them to take horse paste. So if I pissed you off, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So there you have it. If you if he pissed you off, he's uh, sorry. He never meant to do it. Uh, you know, so he he apologized. See, if if he if he pissed you off, if you had such if your feelings inside were all hurt, he's sorry. All right. Oh wait, so what's that? The verdict's in. You got a you got some uh, you got a letter here. Let me uh, let's uh, what do we got here? Uh, let's read what the verdict is and. Uh, the jury finds the defendant uh, guilty of having a head that's completely full of meat. Court adjourned. Thanks for watching the video. If you like what you saw, consider giving the video a like down below. If you want, you could even subscribe to our channel or check out some of the other content we have. If you want to see what else we're doing, you could also find the links in the description for our Twitch channel, our podcast, leave a comment, do all the things, click that bell thing that everyone wants you to click. And if you uh, want to support what we're doing, you can donate to us at patreon.com slash imperial news. Thanks for watching. Have a lovely day.